I've been studying the works of the psychologist Carl Jung for several years, and I thought I'd do a few video blogs on him. I'm going to start out with a two-parter because the files are pretty big. So uh, the first part is going to be the four functions of the personality, thinking and feeling, sensation and intuition. And the second part will be how those four functions constellate into the 16 different personality types on the Myers-Briggs type indicator. So I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you find it useful. The four functions of Jungian psychology start from a meeting. It's a meeting between you and anything you meet out in the world. Any person, any place, anything, doing any verb. So, you're out in the world, and something comes up to you. And when anything comes up to you, you have to ask yourself four different questions. What does it mean? Do I like it? Is it good for me? What is its motion? Where does it come from? Where is it going? And what is it? What does it smell like? What does it taste like? And these four questions are answered by the four functions. Thinking, feeling, intuition, sensation. Now thinking and feeling are yoked together. They're, in fact, they're two ends of a continuum. Thinking and feeling are all about you, okay? Carl Jung called them the rational functions, not rational because they're smart, rational because decisions are made. Intuition and sensation are also yoked together. They're also two ends of a continuum. Intuition and sensation are about the object. Carl Jung called them the irrational function. Now, they're not irrational because they're stupid. They're irrational because no decisions are made. Now, another phrase used, especially when you're dealing with personality types, which I think, you know, th these phrases are better. Uh, thinking and feeling are called the judgmental types because they make judgments. And the intuition and sensation are called the perceptive functions because they just deal with reality as it is. Let's look over the four functions. We'll start with thinking. People whose major function is thinking tend to be very sharp in dissecting. Okay? In the tarot deck, it's represented by swords, which is actually very fitting. Now, because thinking is part of a continuum with feeling, emotions are undeveloped for people whose major function is thinking. And so they tend to run dark. They tend to be spastic, tend to be inappropriate. Okay? If you're somebody whose major function is thinking, do not blow off feeling. Okay? Nurture your feelings. Ask yourself how you're feeling about things. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. And you will find that your thinking becomes illuminated by your feeling, becomes leavened by it, makes it more humane. Okay? So now let's go on to the other end of that continuum, uh, the other judgmental function, the other rational function, feeling. People whose major function is feeling tend to be very warm and connecting. In the tarot deck, it's represented by cups. Cups hold water. They hold wine. Thinking, of course, tends to be undeveloped, and people with a strong feeling function can be wrong with attitude. Okay? Again, the opposite problem for someone whose major function is feeling, you need to develop your thinking. The best way to do that is with math. Take some math courses, because like water and wine, uh, feelings are all over the place, and they can also be inappropriate. They can cross boundaries. They need to respect that. So just like water and wine need to be held by cups, feelings need to be disciplined by thinking. Now we'll move on to the irrational function, also called perceptive. We'll start with intuition. Carl Jung called it the function that sees around corners, looks at beginnings, look at ending, look at motions. Introverted intuitives can tend to be kind of spooky, tarot card readers, maybe the cranks. Uh, extroverted intuitives may have trouble paying the rent. They move from job to job to job because they look for potential, and once they draw out the potential, they're done. It's represented by wands in the tarot deck, of course. A lot of magicians are intuitives. Because it's on a continuum with uh, sensation, if you're a strong intuitive, that means your sensation function is undeveloped. Uh, you're prey to physical compulsions, eating, sex, uh, 
exercise. Muhammad was an introvert intuitive. That's why he couldn't, didn't like dogs, didn't like bells, didn't like music, didn't like art. Uh, had trouble, you know, with women. Always had to have sex with all sorts of partners. Uh, you know, and it's, it's had an impact on Islam, as you can see. If you're an intuitive, keep in mind that your intuition needs to be focused by sensation, just as feeling needs to be disciplined by thinking. Uh, if you're an intuitive, develop your sensation function. You know, listen to some music, really. Close your eyes, listen to music. Pay attention to art, pay attention to flowers, try to dress better. Okay? The final function is sensation. The other end. Sensates know how to catch a football. Uh, extroverted sensates, uh, generally male, tend to be very popular, fit in very well, like to stick with the rules. Represented by pentacles in the tarot deck. Pentacles are also known as coins because they're coins, and the pentacle is the, the, the symbol that's on those coins, the coin of the realm. For sensates, they have trouble with their intuition. It tends to be undeveloped, and because it's not very broad, it can manifest as paranoia. Okay? Sensates, um, you know, the joke that I made about Texas Baptists, you know, they think Jesus was born yesterday and he was a Baptist. You really need to be broadened by a sense of context for this world, uh, and your intuition will help you do that. Now, Carl Jung had the idea of extroversion and introversion. You've probably all heard of it. Uh, people are not extroverted or introverted. They're both. It's their functions that tend to be more extroverted or introverted. We'll look, for example, at thinking. Extroverted thinking, of course, is directed to the world. It's not a surprise. Let's see those little shades on the left. Those are the archetypes. And introverts direct their attention more to the archetypes. Okay? Introverted thinking directs more to the archetypes. Archetypes are very important. Carl Jung called that the psychoid reality. You have to keep track of both. And your functions tend to be directed towards one or the other. Now, as you see, of course, here, as I've shown here, an extroverted function is aware of the archetypes, but doesn't really pay attention to them that much. Introverted function is very aware of the world, but doesn't tend to focus on it that much. Again, I stress psychoid reality is very important. A lot of people think extrovert means social, introvert means shy. No, introvert means introvert, and extrovert means extrovert. Well, I hope you liked that, and I hope you found it useful. I know I did. Uh, the second part is going to be about the personality types, and we're going to talk about how those four different functions interact with each other differently in different people.